just coming out of the saloon. Slip out of sight, Carmen. There may be trouble. I'll meet you later at the sheriff's. All right. Steady, Reed. girls. What's the idea? You start back there, you got nothing on me? No. Besides murder, there's a couple of guns on you, Wells. So don't try any tricks. Get moving. We found this letter on him. It's from a fellow in Middleton by the name of Barker. Barker is the man we suspect of heading a gang of rodeo racketeers, and we've been trying to get a line on him for some time. According to Barker, he wants Wells to get him a girl to act as entertainer in his saloon and to work with the gang. It looks like a job for me. What am I to do? Just this. It's up to you to find out how they operate. Every time they've had anything to do with the rodeo, all the promising contenders for the first prize money have died very mysteriously. We want you to establish the connection between these two circumstances. And when you've got the goods on them, notify us. What does he mean by send us some more bad medicine? We'll find out from Wells. Cowboy doesn't get much rest. Always keyed up for a test. Up and doing, that's the way. Lucky, my boy, according to that poster, Middleton Valley puts on a real rodeo. Yeah, plenty of prize money. <laughs> I hope I can win a contest or two. We sure need it, but it's going to be mighty tough. There's plenty of competition there. Well, that makes it more interesting when the competition is good. Yeah, I know, but wouldn't it be better if we just got a job of singing and entertaining like we used to? It's more calm and pleasant-like. Let's quit chasing these rodeos around the country. What do you say? No, Lucky. I'll just keep on following the rodeo game, win or lose, till I get what I'm after. You mean the gang? But that was five years ago. 
Why, you ain't even my picture. I'll keep on looking if it takes 50 more. I know how you feel, Tex. I shouldn't have said nothing. Ah, forget it. Forget it. Uh, let's get on towards Middleton. Come on. I want to tell you boys that we're sitting pretty. The town committee has placed me in full charge. It ought to be a fine haul, but it may be our last one. What happened if the last three Rodeos can't go on forever? They'll be catching up with us pretty quick, so this has got to be it. Well, maybe we won't have to pull in the rough stuff. I haven't seen a bronc buster in town that Squint can't beat. Well, we won't take any chances. I wrote Charlie Wells to send me some more of that bad medicine. He's sending a girl up with it. Say, we don't want no dames working with this outfit. They'll jam things up sure. Now, wait a minute, Pinto. Just remember that I'm running this show. All right. But I still don't like it. Ha! <laughs> You're local. Besides, a dame will be plenty of help to us around here. In fact, I got a job you can pull for us before she even gets to town. What's the job? There's a shipment of money coming up on the stage tomorrow. Hey, ain't you afraid of taking a chance on gumming the whole works up? No. We could use that, though. Besides, it ought to be easy. The dame will be on the stage. All you boys will have to do is to wait for a signal from her. She'll let you know if the money's there or not. How will we know her? Her description is here. Are you sure she's right, Barker? Charlie Wells sent her. She's got to be right. Like the Middleton stage. Yeah. There's the signal. What's that? Yeah, looks like a signal. It's a hold up, Lucky. Come on. Now, there ain't no use arguing with us. Hand over that strong box. I tell you, we ain't got no strong box. find one in that booth, it'll be just too bad for you. You men can drop your guns. It'll make it easier to get your hands over your head. He's alone. No gun. Let me handle this. Don't try that again. And if the lady wasn't present, I'd drill you right out of that saddle. Why, uh, partner, you're making a mistake. I know you don't like my taking a hand in your little game. But as long as I have, let's lay our cards on the table. Now, uh, wait a minute. You've got us wrong. We were just staging a little reception for the lady here. She's a friend of ours. Is that correct, miss? Why, why, yes, they're friends of mine. Then, then why did you try to take a shot at me? Why, I... Uh... He thought you were one of the boys framing up on us. You think mighty fast. But I guess I can't disprove it, so we'll just call it a misdeal. We'll ride on into town and meet you there. I suppose you're headed for Middleton. That was my intention, and still is. How does that set up uh, look to you, driver? I can't quite figure it out. You ever see them before? Nary a one. All new faces. Say, as long as you're heading towards Middleton, I'd feel a heap better if you'd town and ride in with me. They might decide to come back. I'd be glad to. I think that's a swell idea.
Well, I guess we took care of them fellas all right. Yeah, you, you better ride up top there, Lucky, in case the driver needs a hand. Yeah. Huh? Me get up there and be a target for hold-up men? Well, you handled that bunch all right, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. All right, but keep your eyes open. I don't want to have to kill a half a dozen of them. I'll ride up there with you in case of trouble. Good. I see you to your hotel? Oh, no, thank you. I'll be all right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see you later, though, won't I? I certainly. If you patronize our place of business. Well, you, you, you're kind of putting our friendship on a, on a commercial basis, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> There's the hombres that messed things up. Dave recognized one of them. He claims he's a big rodeo star. But we're not taking any chances. You better get down there and mess them up. <laughs> With pleasure. I didn't know it was a joke until that guy he yanked three of them off the horses and broke their legs. I bet they won't play no more jokes like that. Not when I'm around. There must have been about 30 of them. When I pulled my gun, I says... I, I, All right, go ahead. Now, what were you saying? I was just telling the boys, uh, that is, uh, telling the boys, uh, telling the boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. You were telling the boys how you took us off of our horses. Well, let's see you take that. <laughs> Your friend seems to be in a rather playful mood. I guess I'll have to finish the game with him. Say, what's the idea? That's what I want to know. What's the idea of hitting my friend? Because he's always butting into other people's business. The same reason I'm going to slug you. <laughs> to be mighty capable. Who is he, Sheriff? I don't know. I never saw him before. Think I'll have a talk with him anyhow. I guess it won't do no harm. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, uh... What can we do for you, Mr. Biggs? Young man, I'm one of the sponsors of the Middleton Rodeo. 
And because of my position, it has been my duty to do a little investigating concerning the past activities of a bunch of promoters who have come to town and more or less taken things over. It appears to me that this gang is not exactly on the level. What do you mean when you say that this gang isn't on the level? Just this. Our investigations have disclosed that every time the Barker crowd gets a hold of a rodeo, their men always carry off first money. And every time a local man looks like a likely contender, something always happens to put them out of the running. In fact, in several cases, the local men have died very suddenly under peculiar circumstances. Well, I think I could take a job investigating that gang with pleasure. The fact is, I may have a personal score to settle with them. That's why I wanted to hire you to sort of watch out for the rodeo receipts and keep an eye on the bank here till this thing is over. I figured with a man like you representing us, they won't be so quick to pull any tricks. What do you say? Well, I, I'm mighty pleased at your confidence, Mr. Bix, and I'll be glad to help you. But uh, for personal reasons, I, I'd, I'd much prefer to work undercover. I'll tell you what we'll do, though. And we'll give Lucky the job of guarding the money. Eh, he'd make a much better target than I would, and at the same time, it'd uh, sort of give me a chance to work in with the gang and uh, uh, see if I could get the goods on them. But, Tex, you can't do this to me. Something might happen. Well, now, Lucky, I I'm surprised to hear a man of your caliber talk like that. The job would be a cinch for a man that can handle situations as easily as you can. Don't you remember how well you handled that stagecoach hold-up and, and that fight out on the street? Yeah, yeah, you're right. And maybe they find out that I'm on the job, they'll be too scared to start to think. Well, that's the way I feel about it, Lucky. You can't blame the boys for what happened. After all, his fellow Tex Masters took him by surprise. I guess you're right. They've got to do something about this fellow Masters. Well, unless it's gunplay, you can count me out. I've seen enough of this fighting. <laughs> What's the matter, Pedro? Did you forget to duck? Well, I'd like to see you handle him. He's worse than a barrel of wildcats. Now, cut out the argument, boys. If Masters gets tough again, I'll handle him myself. Is this Pinto? Well, that's right. You two haven't met. Pinto, meet Carmen Serrano. She's taking a job here where she'll be of help to us. Glad to know you. Carmen brought the stuff we needed in case Masters gets too tough for us. That's all you want me for. I'll go and rehearse. All right, Carmen, go ahead. ain't a bad layout. Reckon they'll do some business here during the rodeo. Yeah. They got an orchestra, too. <laughs> well, it ain't Lim Waters. How are you, Lim? Why, hello, Lucky. Where'd you blow it? Just got in. Say, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Tex Masters. Glad to know you. Tex Masters, <laughs> I heard a lot about you. This reminds me of old times. Oh, say, you remember the rodeo song you used to sing? Do you know the rodeo song? Sure, I know that. Come on, Tex, sing it for us, won't you? All right, all right. Come on, boys, the rodeo song. Oh, the rodeo boys have come to town. They've gathered for many miles around to ride in the rodeo. Oh, yep, for the rodeo boys. You'll see lots of drunks that are old and rough with waddies to ride them that are young and tough. Come to the big show. Yep, for the rodeo boys. Ride them with a deep seat. Ray, come and you can't be beat. Rope that steer. Go in the slack. Time's a wasting. Bust his back. Cowboy, cowboy. in the neck. 
think as you leave the shoot, the best pals that I know. Yip with the rodeo boys, raid them with a deep seat. Ray, come and you can't be beat. Rope that still go in the slack. Time is a waste and bust his back. Cowboy, cowboy. With jingle and spurs, so high you boot. Spur in the neck as you leave the shoot. Best pals I know. Well, so we meet again. You expected to see me here when you came, didn't you? Well, yes, but uh, I didn't expect to find you working in a place like this. But I have to work someplace. Well, uh, I guess you're right. <laughs> Say, Tex, maybe we can use her in our act. Your act? What do you mean? Oh, me and Tex ain't sure enough rodeo performers. Now, we're actors. I play on the harmonica, and Tex accompanies me with his singing. It's nice of you to have Tex in your act. I understand you do most of his fighting for him, too, don't you? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least, uh... He starts them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must leave you now. Uh, but uh, we'll be seeing you later, won't we? I hope so. Now, I reckon I was all wrong about her. She appeared to be a right nice gal. And I think she likes me, too. Did you notice some of the things she said about me? Yeah, I sure did. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I take great pleasure in presenting the great Middletown Rodeo. Many of our world's famous rodeo performers, champions, and leading contestants are among our guests today. In behalf of the citizens of Middletown, we welcome them one and all. Trick and fancy ropers are now performing in front of the grandstand.
We next present the stagecoach racing. Barker, we've got to do something about this tax master, or we're not going to have two cents of the prize money. Yes, I know. But I don't want to give him the works unless we have to. I got a tip that the government is after us, so we don't want to get too rough until this thing is over. Whatever we do, it's got to look like an accident. Yeah, and I'd like to be the accident. You probably will be. Now, listen, I've got an idea. Carmen can help us out on this. Let's meet her in town. Oh, there you are, Tex. I was looking for you. I wanted to congratulate you on your splendid show. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're glad you liked our performance. We was going over tonight to see your act. That's right. I thought maybe I could uh, take you to dinner this evening. Yeah, we'd be glad to. You better let me handle this alone, Lucky. You know, you were just telling me that you thought you'd better turn in early tonight on account of you had such a big day ahead of you tomorrow at the rodeo. Don't you remember? You know, you told me that uh, we'd have to win two first places tomorrow in order to be champion. Yeah, I know, but I think you ought to let me tag along with you. Suppose you'd get in some kind of trouble. Why, you'd be in an awful fix without me to help you out. Well, I'm sorry, Lucky, but I know you need your rest. Yes, Tex is right. If you and I will have dinner together some other time for that. I'll see you in town next. I tell you, Pinto, Carmen can handle this. Now, you leave it to me. You sent for me, Mr. Barker? Yes, Carmen. This fellow Masters that you met on the stage has been giving us a lot of trouble. And we figured out a way to get rid of him, nice and easy-like. We want you to get him here and make a play for him. Then Squint will come in and pick a fight. When he goes for his gun, set the Squint to draw first. 
Well, that don't look so good to me. He's mighty fast on the draw. I'm not so slow myself. What are you going to do if he doesn't come? Then we'll give him the works when he rides that buck and horse tomorrow. But this way is a lot cleaner. It looks like justifiable homicide. Do you think you can manage it? I'm not sure, but I'll try. All right, Carmen. Do your best. I don't think there's much danger of that. But there's always danger, great danger. Haven't you made money enough? Why should you want to risk your life riding these bucking horses? Oh, I... I don't know. I, I sort of thought I may make enough money to settle down on a little ranch of my own. Rich horses. You know, there's money in raising good horses. But there's still danger in riding them. Especially for a man who looks like he's going to win the championship. Won't you please give it up? And I'm sorry, Carmen, I can't. I have some personal reasons for wanting to continue. What are these reasons? Can't tell you. Oh, I almost forgot. It's nearly time for my dance. Yeah, I'll walk over with you. Oh, no, I'd, I'd rather you wouldn't watch me. It would make me very nervous. Adios. Adios. <laughs> of this evening's entertainment. Senorita Carmen Serrano will favor us with one of the spectacular dances of our native land. Senorita Carmen Serrano. not to come here. He's here now. Get out there and do just as I told you. I'll head away. Come on, Pinto. You know, I, I sort of felt I, I owed you an apology. 
You know, I, I thought that you had some hidden reason to want me out of the rodeo. I've been thinking it over, and I, I know that I was too suspicious. So I came to tell you. But there is a reason why you shouldn't have come here tonight. Yeah, and a darn good one. Get up your hands, you double-crosser. So it wasn't enough for you to mess up our little surprise party and beat me out of first money in all the rodeo events. But you had to steal my girl, too. But, Squint, he... Shut up, Carmen. All right, you guitar-playing songbird. If you got anything to say, say it fast. Then when you get through, I'm gonna shoot you right between the eyes. And they'll call it justifiable homicide. I don't know as I'd do that if I was you. It don't sound quite fair to me. I'd like to suggest that you put that iron away, and you two fellas can settle this thing on more equal terms. You tried that once before and didn't get away with it. I reckon you boys will never learn. Put up that gun. What seems to be the trouble here? Well, uh, me and this hombre here were just about to settle a little argument. That is, if they have a private room that they don't value too highly. That's all right with me, as long as there's no gunplay. Fair enough. You can use this room right here. in fine style, didn't we? No, Lucky, I... I can't claim any credit for that one. If you hadn't showed up when you did, I wouldn't be here to do the fight. I certainly was frightened. Lucky got here just in time. Say, I'm beginning to see why you didn't want me to come here tonight. <laughs> Thanks. I saw you dance, and that offer of mine still holds good. You can join our act anytime. Oh, thank you, Lucky. And now, won't you please play something? Oh, well... All right, if you really want me to. And providing Tex will accompany me. You see, Tex don't play so good, but his voice ain't so bad, so I let him hit me out by singing. Oh, I see. Uh, let's forget the singing just now, Lucky, if you don't mind. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd rather dance. Yes, Shall we? The alley back home is meow, sure was king. Funny thing, but he had a phone like Elmer for Barney. There was a little girl down on the farm, the cutest you ever seen. But she pinched her nose and sprained her arm trying to play an old fourteen. One day, he was the best by far. He stole the ladies' hearts away when he played on an old guitar. A little frog lives in the old mill pond at singing he's an A. The lady frogs call him old Don Juan. He got a voice like a big string bay.
Don? How are you making out with your investigation of that gang? Well, we are having pretty good luck at mixing it with the gang. But I'm afraid we're not taking very good care of your rodeo receipts, Mr. Bix. Don't worry about that, son. I'll take care of the receipts. The government's been investigating them, but so far they've been too smart. That's all the more reason why I want to catch them red-handed, Sheriff. I think this is the same gang that killed my brother. And if it is, I want to bring them to justice if it's the last thing I ever do. Well, son, take care of yourself, and if you need any help, call on us. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. See you later. All right. The Roman Riders are now performing.
three for six master. He better squint farmer's time by one second. Let's stop that fellow right now. If he wins the Bronx riding event, we're licked. We've got to give him the work. It's the only way. Here. Go fix one up for him. All right. The Bronx riders will now show their skill. I better go back to town and look after the rodeo receipt. We got a lot of money there. Not a bad idea. Got it all fixed for me, hey, Pickle? Come here, look and hold him while I make my ride. needled him, now he's riding the Bronx. We've got to get out of here. The town's deserted. Everybody's here. We'll clean out the bank and head for the border.
Okay. Okay. Bark and his gang are headed for town. I just overheard them talking. They plan to rob the bank and are headed for the border. Say, you find luck in the sheriff and tell him to head for town. and his gang just looted the bank. Put these two birds in jail and follow me. We'll get them. Come on. Get going there. Well, what, what happened? Where's my wagon? Well, the bandits got away with it. What? Good glory. And it's loaded with dynamite. Oh.
Good work, Tex. <clears throat> yeah, I found the money on the road. <laughs> well, that's good. And I've got enough evidence right here to hang what's left of them for murder. What do you mean? Just this. Every time it looked like an outsider was going to win any important prize money, this gang would murder them by putting a needle dipped with poison into the halter ropes of the Bronx. That's how they got my brother. And now I've settled my score with them. Well, I, I think I'll ride into town. There's a certain lady by the name of Carmen that's got some explaining to do. Carmen? Oh, yes. Uh, maybe I should have told you she's the government agent that's been working on this case, and I reckon she'll be plenty grateful to you for helping her out. Government agent? I've just wired headquarters that the Barker gang has been captured, and that you alone are responsible. I want to thank you personally, Tex. Ah, oh, shucks. I, I didn't do anything. But uh, if I've helped you out, I'm, I'm mighty happy. Say, do I get no credit? How about that poison needle? If I hadn't caught him red-handed, by this time, Tex would be wearing horns. I mean, wings. <laughs> <laughs> but that needle wasn't poison, Lucky. They just thought it was. You see, I was the one who brought them the bottle. Well, now, everything seems to have turned out just right. You know, I, I guess being a, a government girl keeps you pretty busy. But I'm not in the government service anymore, Tex. I just wired in my resignation. You see, I thought I might get a little ranch somewhere and raise horses. There's a lot of money in raising horses. Well, that sounds mighty interesting. And I know just the place to find that ranch. Where? Down along the Colorado Trail. Come on. Taking the right road over the night road, meet the moonlight pale. Home, our bus boys, down the Colorado Trail. Somebody there won't sleep tonight. Her eyes are open. Get there, boy. 